If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Instagram. If you just want to say what up, if you want to tell me you love my videos, you can tell me that you hate my videos, but the best way to do that is on Instagram. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Tory Lane says that Young Thug is responsible for 75% of hip hop sound today. And Kodak Black is requesting rehab. Plus, AR Rab gets convicted. Let's talk hip hop. There's a lot of copying of thugger like all right so tory lanes is on his press run because he just dropped his album chicks take five um he was on hot 97 with ebro yesterday right um and he's talking to ebro about a bunch of things and you know tory lane interviews are usually dope and cool and this interview is dope too but there's one hot take from the interview where he says that everybody got their sound from young thug right that you gotta respect young thug and give him his props because right now 75 percent of the rappers you know new rappers Rappers or rappers coming out in the game got their whole swag from Young Thug, right? And I was like, whoa, right? Like, you know, I like Tory Lanez, right? But I got to disagree with him. Like, if he was on my show and we was talking, I'd be like, dog, I'm gonna have to disagree with you, right? And I also like Young Thug, right? But how can he say that everybody's trying to bite off of Young Thug's style or Young Thug is responsible for 75% of the style when Young Thug got his whole style from Lil Wayne, right? When I listened to Carter Five when it came out like a year ago or whatever like that, um, it was perfect, right? Lil Wayne's Carter 5 was perfect. It sounded like everything that all these little rappers try to do, but only to perfection. Like, they wish that they could come out with such a great project as a Lil Wayne, right? And I like Young Thug's music, right? I like Lil Baby's music. I like, um, who else? Uh, Gunna. I like, uh, Lil Nas X, uh, Trippy Red, uh, Lil Skies. I'm just trying to think of people, but all of these dudes, you know, why W. Melly, all of these dudes got their style from Lil Wayne, right? Um, all right, all right, fine. Or you could say they got their style from Young Thug because Young Thug is one generation, you know, younger than Lil Wayne. But where did Young Thug get his style from, right? So it goes back to Wheezy, F Baby, right? Um, and also, I don't even, even if fine i'll give it to you yeah some of these rappers got their style from young thug if you just want to start from there and take little wayne out the picture because he's too old right so fine young thug is where it started and then from there it trickled down and then you know you got your little nas x's now who still get their style from young thug and that is true that's true because young thug came out with a country uh song and then little nas x comes out with a country song too and young thug i mean little nas x will even tell you that he did get his style as far as the idea to make a country hip-hop song from Young Thug so I would give you that right but it's definitely not 75% though right of hip-hop I would say maybe 25 Mm, 40% I'll give it to you right but not 75% because half of these niggas sound like the Migos right they took the Migos whole flow which really came from Skipper the Flipper right when Richard Kidd started doing that shit was he was on quality control before he left quality control and the Migos right everybody is rapping like the Migos everybody takes their flow whether they just stole the whole flow and just rap exactly like that from here on out or if they just dibble and dabble like a Drake might dibble and dabble a little bit but he plays around with a bunch of different flows right and I, i've even heard little wayne use a migo flow before right uh cardi b is the fourth migo if you ask me rich the kids uses that flow too right and again the migos didn't originate that flow i feel like it came from skip or the flipper but uh it's pretty close to the migos you feel me um so I don't know, Tory Lanez, this might be a good ass debate, but 75% of hip hop today got their style or flow from Young Thug? Mm, nah. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. All right, so Kodak Black and 6 9 right? Even though they both are locked up in jail, uh, even though they're both like super villains of hip hop, right? Because you got your, you know, your good guys and your superheroes of hip hop, like your Chance the Rapper or whatever like that. But then you have super villains because for every, you know, superhero, there's gotta be a super villain, right? And I feel like Kodak Black is a really good, mad genius super villain, and so is 6ix9ine. But we ain't talking about 6ix9ine right now, right? So even though these dudes are locked up in jail and going back and forth and going to trial and everything like that, they're still polarizing and they're still in the news as if they were out 
here dropping singles and songs and interviews and videos every day, right? That's how infamous these guys are, right? And so for Kodak Black, we're talking about him today. Um, it's crazy because, all right, last week I spoke about Kodak Black, right? And this was like a little bit before the trial and basically it was saying that he was facing like, you know, 10 years, but hopefully he gets like two, right? They ended up gave, giving him like 46 months, which is like three years and 10 months. So basically four years, right? Um, now, a couple days before he got a sentence though, um, he got into a fight in jail with one of the security guards. And apparently Kodak Black had took a sip from some cup. He looked like he was, you know, high or like he was inebriated on something. Uh, and then he just starts fighting with another inmate and of course the CO. And then he squeezes the CO's balls with his hands like, you know, a crazy person to the point where he probably popped the ball or something. <laughs> I don't know if you could pop a ball, but he, the CEO had to get surgery, right? So I'm sure Kodak Black is gonna get charges behind that, right? The whole thing though is that Kodak Black and his people were saying that somebody had drugged him uh, in jail and that's why he was acting very erratic, right? So, you know, his, his record label came out, they said they drugged him, they wanted to open an investigation, they wanted the FBI to investigate, who would wanna drug Kodak Black? And I even said this last week when I was reporting on this that like, who would give away free drugs, right? Um, and it turns out they didn't give away any free drugs that Kodak Black kind of sideways admitted that he was on drugs himself, right? Because now he's asking the judge for rehab, right? So he's basically asking the judge, like during his prison sentence, can he go to a uh, facility that has rehab along with uh, you having to serve your time, right? Um, and I guess this is because he really knows that these drugs are messing him up. Uh, they're putting him in a bad position and they're really just messing with like, I guess his thought process or his ability to think right and not be so crazy and compulsive and just do whatever comes to your mind, right? Um, and the whole thing is that Kodak Black has been locked up for a couple of months now, right? So naturally, even if you're on like heroin, which is like one of the hardest drugs, even if you're on lean, which is also pretty hard, right? It's not like weed or coke or even crack, right? Naturally, if you're on drugs, even those hardcore drugs, and you're locked up for two, three months, and you don't have access to any of those drugs, then you probably will be clean, right? You would have detoxed and went through withdrawals already and probably don't really need rehab unless you just want rehab more for like a mental thing so that you can learn ways to cope with your life instead of using drugs, instead of, you know, just using drugs. So the whole thing is that, no, he's asking for rehab because he's still an addict, right? So whatever he was sipping in a cup, which was probably lean, right? Um, it's something that he he loves to do coke and lean you could ask him he said it himself uh then you know of course he's gonna need to go to rehab and he's requesting this rehab so i think that it's good that he's requesting rehab i think that is really bad and messed up that he was still doing drugs even in jail like you keep on getting more and more opportunities to rehabilitate yourself but you're still messing up my dude and the, the work, I mean, you're just gonna pick up more charges, right? Uh, not to mention he has other charges pending and some other charges pending and it's scary and I hope that this doesn't happen, but it looks like Kodak Black ain't gonna really see the, you know, the streets until probably like 10 or 15 years from now when it's all said and done, right? Because during this three years or four years that he's locked up, he's got other trials and other things to take care of. And during that time, I'm pretty sure that he's gonna end up getting some more time. Uh, but I guess we'll have to see. Let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. All right, so Philadelphia rapper A.R. Ab um, gets convicted today of like drug trafficking and a whole bunch of stuff, right? Um, and so for y'all that don't know who A.R. Ab is, he used to be a battle rapper back in the day, but ever since then, he's come out with a couple joints, right? Um, he's like one of them hardcore gangsta ass Philly rappers, right? He kind of reminds me of Beanie Siegel, but just like Beanie Siegel if he existed in like 2019, right? Um, hard, like, you know, just a, a, a gorilla, like you don't really want to see A.R. Ab, right um also uh, remember when drake said um i don't really sure what made y'all mad but i drove here in the wraith bumping ar ab when he was dissing meek mill and back to back that's because meek mill had beef with ar ab um and both of them are from the same hood right um 
So anyway, A.R. Ab got arrested along with a couple of his peoples, actually about three of his peoples, a couple months ago, um, and they were denied, denied bail, right? And this A.R. Ab thing is very similar to the... Um, the whole fam going, you know, Rallo thing, because the whole situation is kind of the same where you got these kind of rappers who are not super popular, but coming up and just really, you know, happy with their position in hip hop. They're making money, but they also use that money to do other things in the street, right? So OBH, which is AR Ab's record label, um, they were accused of be money laundering, um, basically being a whole shelf business, like a front business for really what was going on which was they're saying that OBH they out here selling crack meth um and uh something else crack meth and uh coke or something else right um but it was, it was three like old school drugs there was no fentanyl or anything like that right but the whole situation it wasn't weed right and but the whole situation is um that yeah he pled not guilty now a couple of his co-defendants they pled guilty so they're gonna get like a minimum sentence he said he was not guilty but he just got found guilty right when they said that he's guilty he just kind of smirked they put him in handcuffs he was like blew a kiss to like all his supporters as they took him out the courtroom and he took it as a G you know what I'm saying um so with all of that being said his minimum sentence is 15 years and AR Rab is 37 years old right now so he ain't getting out for a minute right until at least 50 right his minimum sentence is 15 years right um and it's crazy because just like with 6ix9ine they started playing a lot of ar rap songs in the courtroom all right so for y'all that don't think that they could play your rap songs in a the courtroom they can they started showing ar rap's videos they started painting him they they used the the term toxic masculinity they used the term you know super gangster you know they they was really like trying to get him right um and the whole situation is that there is this dude named Taz who AR Rab knows or who's part of AR Rab's crew. And Taz is arrested on murder charge, but he hasn't been convicted of it yet. So allegedly for murdering uh, one of AR Rab's rivals or something like that, right? Um, but four days after, Ta uh, after, well, four days after the murder, happens in Philadelphia and we don't know who murdered this dude but AR Rab uh, writes down on notes in his phone uh, some lyrics and they played the lyrics in court and the lyrics go um, I have the whole city scared uh, stand near me I'll call Taz and tell him bring that nigga's head to me right so you are kind of admitting right there you know to that murder or that you ordered the hit right um so technically if you order a hit or you order a murder you could be going down for homicide too but they don't have ar rap on no homicides or no murders at all because they can't really prove but you know besides you know lyrics in a song that he really did tell him to do that right and taz ain't gonna snitch right um also, uh, A.R. Rab had like his stash spot in like a luxury apartment building, right? So unlike, you know, a lot of people, they usually like put the stash spot like in a broken down, you know, trap house or whatever like that. But that calls mad attention. Plus, there's always cops in the hood, right? So he figured he would put it like in his luxury apartment. He could afford it. So he had that apartment uh, with a bunch of keys and everything there, right? But anyway, so the FBI, they did figure out that that was his stash house. They came in there. Uh, they confiscated uh 10 kilos right um and then again ar rab uh raps about it on a song right he's like lost 10 of them quarter million dollar loss got a broke heart uh and they snatched my dog that's the worst part one rap destroys everything you work for i pray to god he don't tell him who he uh they don't he don't tell him who he worked for so again ar rab is kind of pointing himself as the kingpin of this whole organization in his lyrics at least um not admitting it or anything but then also he did an interview he is talking about how you know he came up in the streets he was talking about in that interview how um he ended up getting his block that he has now and in the interview he said that right uh hey i got my block that i have now uh because the last person that had the block got shot in the head so i ended up inheriting that block you know what i'm saying and then building it from there so all of this stuff he's admitting through, you know, interviews, 
his music, his videos, and of course his lawyer is saying, look, this is just his persona. He's a rapper, he's an artist. There are thousands, literally thousands of rappers out there who rap just this same stuff. Right, there are. But if you go check those thousands of rappers, you find out like, ah oh, nah, they just bullshit and they fake. They ain't really about that life. But there are a small percentage of those rappers who if you go check them, they for real about it, right? And AR Rap is one of them, I guess, right? Uh, so is Kodak Black, right? So uh, there you go, man. AR Rap is convicted. The minimum he's gonna get is 15 years. He didn't get a sentence yet, so we'll see what his sentence is gonna be. Judge could come back and be like, life parole after 25 years or whatever the case may be um which is crazy i don't think that he'll get life without parole because he's being convicted of non-violent crimes but it's all crazy man i say free kodak i say free ar rab um but they locking up everybody today yo and this just makes me think like how aggressive the cops are the fbi and the police are um that if they were this aggressive back in the day because they weren't this aggressive back in the day but if they were how many rappers who are out who are legends now uh would have been got locked up you never know jay-z could have caught a case right uh but all those legendary rappers managed to avoid that but not now man not now i don't care if you was out for a month they locking up bobby schmurda and roddy rebel they locking up six nine who ain't really even about their life they locking up ynw melly um nba young boy kodak black uh AI, they don't care they locking you niggas up so, you know what I'm saying? Be easy. Uh, anyway, let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Follow me at Johnny Fasten on Instagram and y'all already know what to do. Peace.